Hello and welcome to June's monthly market briefing. My name is Timothy France and I'm joined by Abhishek Kumar, a senior oil analyst here at Refinitiv. Over the next 10 minutes or so, we will bring you some data-driven insights on the global oil market. And more specifically, we will shine a light on what a return to US-Iran nuclear deal means for market fundamentals. Now, the prospect of additional crude production has a potential to unsettle OPEC plus cooperation and derail the ongoing recovery in crude prices. Now, here on this slide, we have a brief history of geopolitical events that have dictated Iran's participation in global oil markets since 2015. As of today, June 6th, Iran remains subject to US economic sanctions, which limit its ability to trade oil and solicit investments for production and processing activities. Now, talks to derive the nuclear deal in Vienna are ongoing and currently in overtime. The fifth round of negotiations failed to yield an agreement on key issues, including uranium enrichment technologies, international monitoring, and which US sanctions should be lifted. Now, representatives have returned to their respective capitals for consultations before a sixth round of talks is set to begin on June 10th. Pressure is on to agree terms before the Iranian presidential elections in June 18, but participants admit that a sixth round may not be the last. Now, so-called hardline candidates are expected to take office in the Iranian election, succeeding the incumbent President Hassan Rouhani, who orchestrated the deal back in 2015. So the hope is that diplomats can get an agreement over the line before he leaves office. At present, there appears to be a strong political will from both sides for a return to the deal by the end of this year. And this would result in an end to oil and gas sanctions on Iran and an increase in oil exports. For oil markets, that means it's not so much a question of if Iran barrels return to market, but when, how much, and how fast. For oil price bears, Q3 2021 looks like a base case for lifting sanctions. For price bulls, on the other hand, they're looking perhaps deeper into the first half of 2022. Now, I'm not sure there's a third bear case for the Iranian barrels are not factored in. Now, before we ask how much oil Iran can produce, let's take a broader look at market fundamentals to understand how much oil can be accommodated. Now, here we have global demand forecast data from the EIA. Charts in the top row show the severe fluctuations in global supply demand balances following the initial COVID-19 outbreak last year and a rapid economic recovery we are currently seeing through 2021. We are seeing a very clear and rapid rebound in global oil demand, which is now outstripping global supply owing to ongoing OPEC plus production restraints. The line chart, top and center as you can see, shows demand in the blue line is above supply for late 2020 and the first half of 2021. Now shift to the right of that, we show the bar chart how markets are now in a supply deficit of 1.4 million barrels per day in 2Q 2021. Now, as we enter the forecast period, the EIA expects that, that deficit to hold through the rest of 2021 and into the first quarter of next year. Now, inevitably, this forecast depends on OPEC, which ultimately aims to support prices by drawing down inventories and keeping the market structure in firm backwardation, which should reduce the incentive for supply hedging among US oil producers. Now, this strategy could, in theory, help OPEC rebuild global market share. And the top, the top left chart there indicates the very same. Now, in its latest energy outlook, the EIA data indicates that OPEC will rebuild its market share over the next 18 months, raising output from approximately 30 million barrels per day to 34 million barrels per day. Moving to the chart in the bottom left, an increase in market share would allow OPEC to reduce its spare production capacity from 7.6 million barrels per day in the second quarter, this current quarter, to 4.7 million barrels per day by the end of this year. So that's around 3 million barrels per day of additional output to share among its members. Now, allocation of market share will depend on developments in Iran, which has stated that it expects to ramp up production and reclaim market share as soon as sanctions are lifted. Now, the central bar chart on the bottom there shows Iranian production volumes have already started to creep up to 2.45 million barrels per day and a return to 2018 production levels of 3.8 million barrels per day would represent a 1.4 million barrel per day 
increase in production. Now, according to EIA estimates, OPEC could increase crude production by 2.5 million barrels per day from 26 million barrels per day in the second quarter of 2021 today to 28.5 million barrels per day in the fourth quarter of this year. And that would still keep the market in a supply deficit of half a million barrels. Now, assuming Iran is permitted its 1.4 million barrels per day of historical market share, that would leave other OPEC members with 1 million to 1.5 million barrels per day in the remaining supply de deficit to allocate among each other. Now I'm going to introduce Abhishek at this point and he'll be able to take a slightly closer look at OPEC exports and Iranian trade flows. So Abhishek, why don't you uh, take it from here? Thank you, Tim, for such a wonderful insight. Hello, everyone. I am Abhishek Kumar and thank you all for tuning in. Uh, now let's have a look at how things are panning out from OPEC's production and export perspective in recent months and what to expect in near term. Uh, last month, OPEC production was up and recorded at 25.52 million barrel per day as per the latest Reuters survey, which is 280 KBD higher than April's production. And looking at the chart, production has increased every month since June last year, which had the lowest production on record. However, uh, Feb this year was an exception, which saw a drop in production. Uh, production in May was expected to go up as the OPEC plus in its meeting in April decided to return 2.1 million barrel per day of supply from May to July, starting with uh, 350 KBD in May, another 350 KBD in June and 441 KBD in July. Uh, while Saudi Arabia announced the unwinding of 1 million barrel per day of voluntary cut by 250 KBD in May, uh, another 350 in June and 400 KBD in July. And even though the production numbers are higher in April than uh, higher in May than April, uh, it is still lower than earlier anticipated as a reduction in other countries production capped the Saudi increased volume and uh, OPEC compliance last month was pegged at 122% against the 123% compliance in April. Uh, in the latest development, uh, OPEC uh, held the meeting on 1st June and the members decided to stick to the earlier plan of gradual increase in easing supply curb amid the hope of demand recovery in the second half of the year against the possible return of Iranian supplies as the talks are underway and the market participants believe the lifting of sanctions are highly likely, but the question remains uh, how soon. Libya, which has been excluded from the production cut uh, as the country was battered with internal conflicts and on, until August last year, the production was around just 50 KBD and the country now has been producing close to 1 million barrel per day in recent months. And similarly, once Iran ramps up the, uh, its production upon getting the green light, is expected to continue its exemption uh, from the production curbs. Continuing on the topic of uh, return of Iranian supplies, uh, which has been the hot topic in recent months in the oil market. And the major question is when and how quickly Iran can get back to pre sanction level. And in the recent development, Iran is in talks with Western powers to revive the 2015 nuclear deal, also known as Joint Comprehension Plan of Action. And when the agreement reaches, Iran is expected to ramp up the production and export to regain the uh, lo lost market share. Uh, another question is how welcoming the major buyers of Iranian oil will be upon lifting of sanction. And going with the recent reports, India's top refiners have shown their keenness to procure the Iranian oil as and when sanction is lifted. Uh, India was the second biggest buyer from Iran and Iran was amongst the top three in terms of India's uh, oil importing countries. Japan, on the other hand, which was the fourth buy biggest buyer after China, India and Turkey, uh, has said that upon confirmation of lifting of sanction, the country will consider and uh, resume the sourcing as early as in three months. In terms of condensate exports from Iran, South Korea, which was the biggest importer of Iranian condensate, is also expected to resume and increase condensate Im imports from Iran as uh, the current cost of procuring the similar grades from Qatar and Australia is, is more and impacts the margin negatively. So once the Iranian oil is back in the market at the pre sanction level, it will pose competition to other suppliers, which caters to Asian demand and will also impact the oil prices negatively if uh, demand recovery is not on the expected lines. And on the demand pickup, OPEC plus experts called the Joint Technical Committee have forecasted the improvement in demand by 6 million barrel per day in 2021.
now shifting the gear to oil product market and uh, uh, let's start with light display so us uh, after two weeks of drawdown saw an unexpected build in gasoline inventories with us gasoline inventories rising 1.5 million barrel to 233.98 million barrel last week uh, us gasoline demand in the week prior to last uh, rose to the highest since shutdowns to limit the spread of covid-19 which uh, begin more than a year ago, as reported by EIA. And as the demand remains strong, gasoline stock are expected to fall in coming weeks. Whereas in Ara, there was a drawdown of 0.8 million barrel, and Singapore, there was a build of 1 million barrel. In Fujairah, the lightest lead stocks were largely stable and were up just 98 kilo barrel. Demand is already improving in Europe and US as mobility increases amid easing and restriction, whereas in Asia, uh, the gasoline complex is facing the headwinds from lower demand affected by the tightened COVID-19 restrictions in major economies. In terms of NAFTA demand, a steady or improved flows are expected out of Middle East to Asia as more and more crackers return from maintenance and few new crackers come online in uh, coming weeks. Moving on to Middle East, uh, in Middle East, lates, except Singapore, all the regions such as U US, ARA and Fujairah registered the build-in inventory. U.S. inventory increased by 3.7 million barrel, uh, and this week, uh, this compared with the stock draw of 3 million barrels a week earlier. Both U.S. and ARA may see the drawdown in coming weeks as the restriction is easing gradually, and more and more people are uh, vaccinated. In one of the major development, China imposed the consumption tax on import of LCO from June 12th which uh, makes it unviable in gas oil blending pool for export, uh, which will result in lower gas oil export from China in short term. On the other hand, export of gas oil from South Korea may increase as uh, South Korea was the major supplier of LCO to China. However, with improvement in demand in West of Suez, uh, we may see better arbitrage opportunities, which will help uh, taking out barrels from the region. So that's all from my end. Back to you, Tim. Thank you. That's great. Thanks, Abhishek. I think it's uh, particularly interesting to see those uh, middle distillate inventories in Singapore trending downwards. And uh, you definitely want to see that continue uh, for the sake of uh, demand for Iranian crude, which tends to have a pretty strong distillate yield. So uh, positive signs, at least for the Iranians and NIOC there. Um, so yeah, I just want to share with you this, this slide here. This is uh, Iranian production historically. Um, and as Abhishek mentioned, it's, a, it's really a question of uh, how much and how fast with the return of Iranian barrels. Now, if we take a look at these production numbers in ICON, uh, this is based on Reuters survey data. Uh, Iran is getting a running start on this, as we know, um, and the market might even expect uh, a rush of barrels when sanctions are lifted. Iran is likely to initi initially liquidate its floating storage position, which would free up its vessels for trade, um, meanwhile buying some time while it ramps up production at the wellhead. Um, and uh, NIOC and government officials say they're more or less ready for immediate return to max capacity, which could be somewhat ambitious, um, and upstream experts are, are doubtful. Uh, some consultants suggest shut-in fields will require gas injections and may take time to bring it back online. Now, if you look back at previous sanctions events in 2015, it took six months for NIOC to raise production from 600 by 600,000 barrels per day, rising from 2.9 million barrels per day here in December to 3.5 million barrels per day um, the following June. So it took six months to get there and then took another two years to hit the peaks of 3.8 million barrels. So the next question is, how is the market pricing these barrels today? So this is the forward curve, top chart, we have ice Brent futures, bottom chart, we have DI, DME Amman futures. And we can see that both charts are in steep backwardation, indicating a tight market through the remainder of 2021 and into 2022. Now, the EIA forecast that we discussed earlier of an ongoing supply deficit certainly reinforce uh, this position and this structure. Um, and what's more, where there is no indication that the market is pricing in a sudden supply glut at any point, which would probably be reflected in a flatter curve, if not a contango kink. As we can see, smooth back gradation uh, throughout the remainder of this year and into 2022. Now, here we go. Quick, quick look at front month print futures here. Um, we see the bulls are in total control of this market still, as they were a month ago. However, 
There was a sell-off on July contracts in mid-May uh, when rumours of an early nuclear deal spooked the longs. Um, we might expect the same again if a deal is struck this month um, as a surge in Iranian exports ahead of official end to sanctions is plausible based on the current export patterns that we've addressed already, plus the buyer interest that Abhishek mentioned, which could feasibly threaten August and September contracts. Uh, just a final quick note here on market sentiment. Um, now, here we have managed money longs and net longs, uh, which have been trimmed recently. Uh, these are for ice brand futures and money managers. Yeah, as I mentioned, trimming their long positions. And if we look over here, shorts have actually increased somewhat. As you can see over the past few weeks, uh, the number of contracts short has built to 106,000, still re small, relatively speaking. Um, but it does suggest uh, <laughs> people perhaps uh, could be wrong-footed at this point. Um, now, this indicates the, the, the aggregation of shorts it does indicate a slight bearish shift in sentiment and is divergent from the current price action. However, you, know, you worry that those shorts might find themselves having to cover positions very quickly, especially if negotiators fail to strike a deal in the near term, and that could present significant upside risk for prompt prices. So you know, only time will tell, and the markets will be paying close attention to the 11th hour negotiations which are happening in Vienna um, in early June, and we'll see if negotiators can revive the nuclear deal and bring Iran back to market. After that, for sure, the market will be asking questions of an OPEC plus response. Uh, we'll have to wait and see. So join us again next time. Thank you very much.